guys, I am Danny with Summer Sky Gardens. I am out at the farm. It is kind of approaching mid-March, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you guys around and kind of give you like an early spring. Well, I don't know. We're kind of like really into spring now where I live. Um, tour of the flower farm so you can see what all is growing. For those of you that are new here, uh, my name's Danny, and I own a flower farm in Splendora, Texas, which is right northeast of Houston. So we're in zone 9B, if you follow that kind of thing. Um, and we grow flowers for retail as well as wholesale. We have a large U-Pick area that we'll be opening up hopefully soon. And we run bouquet subscriptions and hopefully in the future a lot of other things. So. Let's go take a quick tour and I'll kind of show you what all's going on and the plans for the next few months. All right, so first thing we'll kind of come off the back patio here. You can see where I have a lot of trays of seedlings that are hardening off. I only have a couple left inside and I have to start some more here soon. These are some Cosmos, tons of Zinnias, but I have a lot more that I'll be starting soon. I have my mum cuttings, which I should be selling soon. I'm just trying to get rid of the aphids that are on them, which is a common thing this time of year. And let's walk out this way. So here is the wildflower, wildflower area. It's a little underwhelming and disappointing for this year. I planted this field exactly how I have done wildflowers in the past and they just have not grown well. I think the main issue is the leaf cutter ants back here. I've had a horrible infestation on the farm as well but mainly in this area and I could see them just eating the little seedlings over time and I just never had enough time to really treat them and get rid of them. They're very hard to get rid of. You usually have to douse their nests multiple, multiple times. Um, so they've just kind of eaten away a lot of the wildflower se uh, seedlings, unfortunately. I mean, I have a handful that have made it through, but not enough to really make this like a pretty area for photography the way I wanted it to. So it's not the end of the world, um, but it's not really going to be able to do much with it uh, this year, unfortunately. So my plan for the wildflower area would be um, just kind of let it go, you know, let it do its thing until the fall. And then I'll mow it down, so kind of disperse whatever seed is there from the wildflowers. And then I'll plant new. And in the meantime, I will do my best to get rid of the leaf cutter ants and kind of stay on top of that so that when I get some new wildflowers growing, hopefully they will do a lot better. I really think that was the issue uh, because, you know, I've planted wildflowers for years at my home um, and never had an issue. So I guess we'll see. But, you know, in the end, it wasn't like, a lot of work on my part so the fact that it didn't quite work out this year is not the end of the world it's just kind of a bummer but hopefully next year it'll be a lot prettier so I'll kind of show you the front of the house um, I had planted some flowers up in here and I've been slowly removing these palms which I hate they're ugly um, they don't do well in our climate here and I ordered a bunch of roses and I'm gonna add kind of some new landscaping. But the main thing is I need to finish painting it up in here. So that's still on the list too. And let's turn around. And here is our large U-Pick area, which we are working hard setting up. My husband has been helping me a lot with this, which is awesome because it is, it is a lot more work than you think it will be. <laughs> um, and I, you can see here I had transplanted some zinnias already. So this whole half of the field is going to be mostly zinnias with a few other flowers. And then the other half is going to be all sunflowers. And this is gonna be where people can come, you know, pick flowers to put in a container to take home. So. I'm really excited to get this finished and get planting and hopefully get people up in here maybe 
by the end of April, beginning of May. All right, let's come over here to what I call the production area. And you can see a lot of stuff is growing and starting to bloom. So this first area, I planted just a little crop of mignonette. Very cute little flowers. We'll see if there's a lot of interest from florists or if I just end up using them in some mixed bouquets. Some of them are nice and tall. Some of them are a little short, um, but easy to grow. Didn't have to cover them over the winter. So we'll see how those do. Um, here are the rattle poppies. They have not bloomed yet. I'm interested to see how those look because I haven't grown this variety before. And then I have some extra status here. And then let's go over here. So this is my earlier successions of status. So of course had to plant the yellow, which is just now starting to bloom. They're nice and tall, they look beautiful. And then I have like some more pinkish purpley colors. Kind of through here. But I think those are gonna look really, really nice. I love status. And then have some straw flower that made it over the winter. No blooms yet. Those are usually more towards summer. This next row is some snapdragons, which are growing nicely. These ones in the front are my earlier succession. So they are starting to put up some blooms. So excited to start getting some snapdragons soon. They're looking really nice. I have a few over here I'll show you guys that are a lot taller. This is my Lysianthus row. <laughs> and the earlier ones did not make it, which was a huge bummer, but definitely a good learning lesson. I was trying to start them too early. And the subsequent ones look great. <laughs> so. Um, I think it'll be a bit of a loss on my part, but definitely a good learning experience. And I'm excited to grow these, you know, next year because Lysianthus are just beautiful. They last a long time. But, um, but yeah, definitely learned my lesson on trying to start them too early. So here is another section of Snapdragons. Like I said, getting some bloom soon. So these are kind of the earlier ones and then these are like the later ones. So I'll have kind of some natural successions of snapdragons. Now this section was Bupleurum, which I direct seeded. It did pretty terrible. <laughs> so I'll have a few usable stems, but overall disappointing. I don't think I'll grow this anymore because I've had two years now where I've tried it out and it just hasn't done that great. And I just really don't want to waste time on it anymore. But you can see back here are the Bells of Ireland and those did a lot better. So I would rather just plant a full row of that instead of waste this space on the Bupleurum again. All right, here are the lilies, which are starting to bud up. I would love to have some for Easter, but I don't think they're gonna quite make it. Who knows, we'll see in a couple of weeks, but I think they may just kind of miss that window. So here are the bells. You can see they are starting to form here. So I'll probably give them another week or two and then I can start harvesting. So let's go around here to the back. I had come and planted more lilies back here because I ran out of room and I just had this kind of open space on the drip lines. Um, this back area, so this row is all stock, which look amazing. I harvested my first couple of stems um, this morning. It's starting to bud up. This is all feverfew, which typically blooms kind of later spring, but also looks good. This was some of my more later Lysianthus, which have done great. And then here I have Cress, Emerald Beads Cress, which is a really pretty green filler. And it's growing nicely. 
And then behind this, I started planting the florette zinnias. So as soon as these are done, I'll add some more. This row is all of my queen lime zinnias, some different colors. This row is going to be some bennery zinnias. So I've already kind of started some of those. And like I said, I have some more trays to transplant and a ton more seeds to start. Okay, let's go over here to like the bulb perennial area. So the daffodils have done wonderful, you know, not a lot of blooms out here because I've been harvesting on them. Let's kind of go up a little closer. Really liking the double ones. They've been super pretty. Definitely popular with florists. So here's like a double mix. This is the one that just bloomed today I didn't catch. Very pretty. A lot of them smell, some of them don't. Um, over here I have mountain mint that I had overwintered. It's starting to grow and obviously you can see I need a weed. Just haven't really had time. Let's go down these last areas. So this row is all anemones. They've done okay, not the best ever. Um, lilies, of course, here look great. And then over here I have yarrow. And you can see where a couple of them are starting to put up some stems. So I think I just didn't do well with choosing the best anemone varieties. Like they're pretty, but most of them are too short to really do a whole lot with. And then kind of the crappy thing, not really sure what happened, but in this section, I had a lot just spontaneously die. So I don't know if they just got some kind of yucky fungus or something's messing with them under the ground, but I just decided not to worry about it. Here's the ranunculus, which has grown really well. This has been my best year for ranunculus. Starting to get some blooms. Very excited for that. So I should have some really pretty ranunculus just in time for my bouquet subscriptions, which will be super fun for them. Um, I got some plugs in of some sedum. So I got that transplanted. That's a perennial. And then, yeah, this last area is, yeah, more lilies. And then some salvia, which is growing back amongst those weeds. And then the yarrow, which that kind of stuff will stay in place. Um, the lilies I may leave. The daffodils I'll definitely leave. The anemones and ranunculus will get yanked up. And I'll probably plant sunflowers over here. And then replant these in the fall. So, yeah, overall looking really good. And then the last little spot I'll show y'all is where I had my tulips all in the crates. They're pretty much almost done. I've harvested a bunch. You can see where some of them just kind of fried up. Not really sure why. I mean, I was watering them. Um, I protected them from the sun. I did get a lot of blooms, but I did have a lot of loss. But the last variety I've been harvesting is the Amazing Parrot. So I've still got a handful of those to go. And then the tulips will be pretty much done. And then this, um, this crate, I don't know, they look fine. They're just not blooming yet. Um, it said they were Angelique. I don't think they are. <laughs> I think I got a couple of mislabeled varieties. Um, but we'll see. Lastly, I just wanted to show you how the cooler has been doing and kind of what I have in there. Um, it's been great. I don't know how I would have been able to sell what I've sold so far without having the cooler. So I definitely think it was worth the effort. It was worth the investment and it'll only continue to help the rest of the year. But let's go walk inside and I'll. All right. And I will say so far, I haven't noticed like a huge increase on the electricity bill. But I'm going to give it a couple of months to see. Plus, need to see how it does in the warmer time. But you can see, definitely staying, you know, I set it at 40. And it'll kind of range between 35 to 40. So that's been really good. 
I like to come in here if I need a break because I'm getting too hot, but you can see still to have a bunch of tulips. These are kind of getting to the end of their shelf life. I do have some beautiful, these are the amazing parrots. So pretty. Definitely ordering more of those. Um, tons of daffodils, some anemones. So, so pretty. So pretty much what I have in here. These will kind of hold till next week as well as these. These are kind of getting to the end of their shelf life. So I'm trying to move them the rest of the week. But if they don't, then I'll probably just ending, end up making like some little posy bouquets and, and giving those away. But I might end up putting these parrot tulips in the bouquet subscription the next week, which should be really fun. All right, guys, so that is it. Kind of just a quick little tour around the farm for spring. Wanted to show you what's in bloom, what's growing, what has done really well, what has not done so well. Um, I'm very excited to get our U pick up and running and have people be able to come to the farm and enjoy that and kind of see our space. So if you're in the Houston area and you're interested in coming up here to Splendora to pick flowers, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. It will be linked below on this video. So you'll be notified when um, we finally open up. But thank you guys so much for being here and for tuning in. And I will see you in my next video.